Hey everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to set up your server.properties file in Minecraft. So on your Minecraft server you will have a server.properties file. In this video we're assuming you already have a Minecraft server. That could be one started using our tutorial in the description down below is how to make a Minecraft server here or on Apex Minecraft hosting. Thanks to Apex for sponsoring this video. You can check them out the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to get an amazing 24 hour DDoS protected Minecraft server. We actually love and trust them so much. They host our own server. Play.breakdowncraft.com on Apex Minecraft hosting. So again if you want to start a server in the quickest and easiest way possible, check out Apex, the first link down below. But nonetheless, no matter how you have your Minecraft server, if you've created one using our tutorial here, or if you have one through Apex or any other way, then guess what? You are going to have a server.properties file. As you can see, right here it is in this server. Now, your server.properties file is going to kind of have the basic information of your vanilla Minecraft server. However, even if you don't have a vanilla server, you have a server.properties file and it is active. So paper, bucket, spigot, Forge, any other server out there does also have a Minecraft uh, server.properties file on it and I would recommend editing them honestly and checking it out. And so we're going to go over and do in this video. Now if you double click on your server.properties file it's going to ask you what to open it with if you've never opened one before and I would recommend using notepad for that um, most of the time that's going to be sufficient because you're only going to be usually changing a few specific things in this however since we're going to be going over every single file in here I'm going to go ahead and open up Atom which is a text editor that will allow us to basically see all of this in a much better format as you can see we have variables in red and the main thing in blue here as well as uh, the ability to kind of format this a bit better so I have went through and reformatted the server.properties file if you open up yours it's going Going to be a bit different I should say than ours right this isn't going to be in this same layout we have it in the everyone should use basically everyone watching this video should review these settings most people should review these settings like some people are going to need to review these settings and then everybody is going to need to ignore these right 99% <laughs> of players aren't going to use these down here except I do see one setting that does need to be moved. But nevertheless, that's kind of how this is broken down. Now, for the settings down here at the bottom, unneeded for most players, I'm not going to mention them at all. And because of that, we have this linked in the description down below. So the server.properties overview here gives you basically the in-depth look at the Java Edition server.properties and what everything is used for on Java Edition. Right here it is, everything like that. Now, again, for most of the settings, I'm going to be going through them, but if you do see a setting on the, you know, unneeded sort of settings down here that you want to know more about, you can read more about it at the link in the description. As far as our text editor, we are using Atom. No sponsor, no anything like that. It's just my preferred text editor. There's probably better ones out there, but if you want to use Atom like me in this video, you can download it from the link in the description because we get asked about it all the time. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and jump on into this. So first things first, we have spawn protection. This is the radius around spawn in blocks that is protected by default by vanilla Minecraft. This means in this radius, 16 blocks by default around spawn, players cannot break items. Modded players can, but people who are opt on your server, which is what I call modded, modded means opt, opt means modded, and uh, basically that means they have all the access and all the things that they want to do on the server, including stopping it, they can do all of that. Anyone who isn't opt can't break a 16 by 16 radius around spawn. Now you can change this to 8, you can change this to 1, whatever you want. I recommend just setting it to 1 to kind of basically disable it. They can't break the block they're standing on, but they can break any other block. But you could, if you wanted to protect more around spawn, make this higher. You can make it 32, you can make it 100 blocks. It is up to you. But by default, vanilla players will join into your server who aren't opt, cannot break a 16 by 16 radius. You can change that to whatever you want. View distance, think of it like render distance, but on a Minecraft server. This is how many chunks around a player that basically they can see. The server controls render distance, a player doesn't. Now a player, if their render distance is less than the server render distance, won't be able to see as far as the server can, does that make sense? But by default, the server overall controls render distance. 10 chunks is what it is. For a lot of survival servers, this is a big lag item. And I would recommend dropping it to six, that's going to be six chunks around a player. Usually that's enough. Some skyblock servers, though, where you don't need to say a ton of chunks around a player, will drop this to even four. But six is a decent setting for lag and all that stuff. However, if it's just like you and a friend, leave it at 10. Nevertheless, moving on from there, we have the server IP. For me, that's empty because this is a local server. But normally, this is where your server's IP would be, right? So, for example, 192.168.1.1 would be like your local host. Or if you have the server with someone like Apex, the IP of the server will be listed there. From there, let's go ahead and move on to the game mode. This is obviously what game mode you want your server to be in. By default, it is survival. You can change this to creative. You can change this to adventure. Whatever basically game mode you want your server to be, that's what it's going to be set as. This is what people will join the server and 
be when they join the server. Creative, for example, you change that creative if you want people to be in creative when they join the server. Server port, this is the port your server is on. By default, the Minecraft server port is 25565, but that will change depending if you're on a, like a server host like Apex. That port will be different. For most people, though, by default, it's 25565. Allow nether, do you want the nether to be allowed or basically do you want the nether to be on your server? True, means it is. False, means it isn't. Minecraft message of the day. Let me pull up Minecraft real quick. I'll show you what this is. So I now have Minecraft open and the message of the day is this message right here. As you can see, it is a Minecraft server by default on this secret server that we have. And guess what? It is over here, a Minecraft server looking good. Now, one thing I will mention is if you want it to be all colorful and crazy like this, you can do that, but you're going to use plugins to do that. This isn't for plugins. This is for a vanilla server. So overall on a vanilla server, this is what it's going to look like. You can add color in here as well. And there is a link in the description down below on a, or to a tutorial on how to do that. Nevertheless, from there, we can go ahead and look at hardcore. Hardcore is, is your server a hardcore server? Can you die more than once? Basically, if true, it is going to be a hardcore server. You're going to be able to die only once. And then once you die as a player, you cannot really rejoin the server. I think you can rejoin it, but maybe in spectator mode. And then for hardcore, if you don't want it to be a hardcore server, you would change it to false. For whitelist, whitelist is basically whether or not you have to use the slash whitelist space add username command, and then only people on your whitelist can join the server. If you do only want players who are on the whitelist, it's a good way to private your server, for example, to be able to join the server, change this to true. If you want anyone to be able to join your server, you can change this to false. Now, as far as enforce whitelist, it assumes that whitelist is true. And if whitelist is true, enforce whitelist means whenever you do slash whitelist space on, you turn on the whitelist from in game. So if we were to change whitelist to true and enforce whitelist to true, and then, you know, basically the server was running when you were to make these changes, it would, in theory, kick people. It's not actually going to do that. The only way enforced whitelist will work is if it's on, you start the server, whitelist is off, and then you use the slash whitelist on command to turn it on. That was a little bit complicated, but just know that if you're on a server, the whitelist is off, and then you turn it on, and enforce whitelist is on, everyone who's not on the whitelist will get kicked from the server. From there, let's go ahead and move on to broadcast console to ops. Basically, this means any commands that take place in the console will also be shown to any ops on your server. I'd recommend leaving that on, actually, just in case. PVP. Can people PVP on your server? If it's set to true, they can. If it is set to false, they cannot. Spawn NPCs. Do you want NPCs to be able to spawn at all? Do you want animals to be able to spawn? Do you want monsters to be able to spawn? True means they can. False means they can't. Pretty simple there. Entity broadcast range. This is basically a value of what range do you want entities to appear and start showing on screen. Now remember we did change our view distance up here. We changed that to 10 from 10 to about 6, right? So this is kind of weird. It's a percentage. So a percentage of 100% being 100 is the default value. Anything less than that would be a percentage. 60%, 50%, something like that. So we changed our view distance from 10 to 6. That's basically going from 100% to 60%. So with this, I'd recommend changing it to 60% and trying to keep view distance and entity broadcast per range percentage kind of in the same value. Player timeout is the time in minutes. How many minutes do you want before a player is kicked from a server when they have went AFK, right? So if a player stops moving, do you want it to be five minutes? Do you want it to be 10 minutes? Zero disables this, by the way. They can stay AFK for as long as they want. Max players is how many players you want in your server. For example, Breakdown Craft 600, a sec or this uh, you know secret server we have is one, two, three. And on this server here, it would be 20 players. It kind of just depends, whatever you want. Now, remember that while you can have as many players as you want, it is important to note that your hardware is going to limit how many players you have. If you were to put 20,000 on here and then 20,000 people were to join a server and the server's hardware can't keep up with it, which pretty much no hardware can. Usually if you have 20,000 players on a server, you're spreading it across multiple servers, then uh, yeah, it's just, it's not going to work, right? So anyway, set it to whatever you want, but just keep in mind that it is important to keep your hardware in line with the amount of players you have on your server. Difficulty is easy, medium, and hard. Obviously these are your default Minecraft difficulties. You can set this to whatever you want, but that's where you can change it. The difficulty setting here. Now, resource pack, resource pack prompt, and require resource pack are basically, do you want your server to have a resource pack? If you do, you would go ahead and add a resource pack link here. So this is going to be a link to directly download your server. So download.com slash link, for example, right? You're going to put a link there to the resource pack. If you want to require people to have that resource pack, you would change this to true. I would recommend never doing that unless your server is like 100% dependent on custom textures. Then a resource pack prompt. This is what you want it to say whenever people are prompted to join your resource pack. So you could add 
add whatever text you want there and it will say it whenever you know someone joins your server you could say download our pack for the best experience for example and then it would give them the link to go download it. And Minecraft will actually make that pretty simple. If you do it correctly, it will actually download it and install it all in one go without the player having to do anything. Command blocks, obviously, are blocks that can run commands in Minecraft. Do you want those on your server? True or false there. Forced game mode. Do you want people, every time they join your server, to be forced into survival, forced into creative, something like that? If you do, well then go ahead and change this to true. If you don't, leave it false. For example, if players can switch game modes on your server, then there's no reason to really do that. However, if they can't you might want to do this as a safeguard just in case someone does figure out how to switch a game mode this wouldn't move them back to survival world name this is something that i debated putting here or not this is what the world is actually called in your server files so for us as you can see the world name is called world if you were to change this to say you know the uh best map it would now make the level name the best map and the world would no longer be active there. It would basically change the name. However, I would recommend leaving that by default, but some custom apps can change that, so it's worth mentioning. Online mode, do you want your server to only allow basically original Minecraft accounts? This can be how you can create a cracked server. It's gonna be more in depth than that, but I'll leave that there. I would recommend leaving that true all the time. Max world size, if you want to limit your world size, you can do it here. However, there are plugins that can do it much more efficiently, but that is an option as well in your server.properties. Allow flight, this is kind of an anti-cheat sort of a thing. I'd recommend leaving it false, but if you do want a true, you know, like, basically anarchy style server, you could change allow fight to true, and that's gonna allow people to fly in survival without any sort of anti-cheat built in by Minecraft. Now, enable status is actually a really cool setup. Now, by true means your server is going to appear online like these two do. If you were to change that to false, it would basically mean it would appear like a server that didn't have anything. One second. So as you can see here, I've now added this new offline server. It's just gonna ping forever and then never basically find anything and say it's offline, right? Now, if that's the case and you want your server to basically kind of be a mystery and show that cannot connect to server, that the server's offline, then guess what? You can do that. If you change enable status to false, people will, will be able to see that your server's online, but when you double click on it here, it will join it anyway. So cool stuff. That's a really way to, good way to have a stealth server and something that I think is awesome. Now, there you have it. That's the basic settings that most people are going to need and what they all do in Minecraft as well as some of the recommended settings that I would recommend. Now, here's the thing. These settings down here in some cases can be used, but most of the time they're not, and if they are, mostly you'll be told to by something else. A plugin might need them, different things like that. So if that's the case, make sure you do look up their like functionality on the website right back here just to make sure you know what you're getting into. You can just simply, you know, find them command F or control F, and then for example, if you wanted to look up view distance. Right, like so, there it is, view distance, and it says what it does, right? So awesome stuff there. That is um, that is how to set up a Minecraft server.properties file. If you do have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more awesome Minecraft tutorials every single day of the week. My name is Nick, and I'm out. Peace.